Hello guys and welcome back to The Sim here in Brunei. This episode, we're going to move away from the 737 and concentrate on the Cessna 172 desktop mounted instrument panel. Ideally created for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 because the interfacing is so easy as you may have seen in previous videos. So the idea for this is to have a desktop mounted unit with a big screen behind and the Garmin screens that you can see really easily in front of you. You can see that I've cut one Garmin screen out, the other one is missing because I'm going to create a better model. You'll see that in this episode hopefully, not the new one but the old one. What I need to do now is create the frame that supports this on the desktop. Put this to one side. back in from outside all the wood has been cut painted and you've seen it being created on the CNC machine that just leaves me now to assemble the basic frame these screws are a little bit long I think these are two and a half inch I would have preferred two inch but that's all I've got at the moment So believe it or not, that is the basic frame. Four pieces of wood, very simple. And they are just butt jointed with a couple of screws. Nothing hard to do there. Next up is the main instrument panel for the Cessna 172. This was created on the CNC machine. These angles are very important and I've created 3D print guides to get this exactly right with a jigsaw. Also, there'll be templates for the G1000 if you want to cut them out too. Okay. This simply gets mounted to the frame here. Like so. Once again, I don't have the correct size screws. These are M20s, really could have done with M30s, but they'll do for the time being, and then I get them on order and replace them later. Hopefully, they'll be strong enough to hold them in. Let's give it a go. Works fine. It's starting to take shape, that's how it's going to look. Let's get the glare shield on next. And the glare shield was printed in four parts. Here they are. Now, these were designed to slot together. Like so. And if I've cut this right, which I should have because this was done by the CNC machine, this should slot directly on. Next up is the avionic panel, and I've created it in grey PLA, raised text, and then used a paint marker. It is designed to be backlightable if you can go through the hassle of doing that. 
So you would print this panel here, the face panel in white, you'd spray it gray, and then you'd sand off the top layer with the raised text to reveal the white behind it. And on the back plate, I'm not gonna do this because I'm quite happy with it just being the way it is. To make it backlightable, you would place your 12 volt LED strips in various positions. That would be hidden by the face plate, the recess in the back of the face plate. Uh, this centre hole here is where you would bring the wires out for the 12 volt LED lighting. I'm not doing that, I'm more than happy with just using a paint pen on raised text. Again, this is just a desktop unit that I can jump on straight away and have a little fly around the new areas that Microsoft Light Simulator bring out. So my first job is to fit all these toggle switches into location and we've got the big one at the top here. So as I'm placing these toggle switches, I'm just going to make sure that all the tangs are facing upwards. That's this little recess in each one. And this one here is the on off on. It just needs a securing nut on the front side. I'm just going to give that a little tweak with a socket, tying it up. Then I'm going to fit these smaller ones. These are just on offs. That's how the toggle switch is fitted. They're all just on offs at the bottom here, and they're mainly for lighting. And I'm just going to tighten these up with a socket. I think that's the back plate done. I'll put that to one side. Um, we'll pick up the face plate. First thing I can see straight away is we need to put the LED in and that just pushes in the back. It's a tight fit. It's not going to go anywhere. Then we've got our pots and of course we've then got their securing nuts that go on there. Now it's time to marry the two parts together. Yeah, that looks good. I'm putting the securing screws. I'm going to turn all the pots all the way down and then put these knobs. Now these knobs came with these pots and they just seem ideal for the job, so that's what I'm using. Just make sure all the arrows, all the markers are in the same position, in the off position. Go. Next up we've got these two homemade switches now and here's the 3D printed case and we've got these two buttons that have to fit inside. Because these are quite difficult to get hold of it's easier to make your own and a bit of two millimeter bar which I've already cut to the correct length. I'm hoping this bar is just going to gently push through the holes in the switches. Then we have to mount our toggle switches to the back plate. And we have to put the front side in first. Yep, like so. Turn it round and then feed our back toggle switches into the unit. So, here's the one I created for the other side already, and that is in white. So, there's a red and a white one. Again, it pushes in. We just use four M4 screws through the holes, and that's going to tighten onto the back plate of the face panel and uh, hopefully keep them secure. That should be them secure. And then we've got independent toggle switches as required. Here we go. This should really start to bring the panel to life. So next up is the ELT switch and this came from a broken aircraft. I saved it from the bin and it sat in this storeroom for about five years. 
No idea why I kept it, but it's coming in handy right now. I'm just going to push it in there, going to drill some holes and then put a few screws in. Next up we've got the G1000, now this is my first prototype, it's based around a 10 inch LCD screen from eBay. This was the cheaper version and I think it was about £30 to buy. It is all 3D printed, the frame. It's got a mount for an Arduino here for the buttons. These are the LCD driver board and the menu card. That just requires a HDMI input there, which then goes off to your PC. I have vastly updated the design since this was produced and uh, I will show you the, the new design in a later video. But for time being, I'm going to use this old prototype here just so we can see what the panel is going to look like. And this was designed just to be fitted in with three M4 countersink screws. Okay guys, that's as far as I want to go today because in the next episode I need to go away and create the new Garmin 1000 for the MFD which is going to go here and also the centre autopilot panel. Until then guys, I'll catch you later. Sim out.